Hi and Assalamualaikum to Dr. Zeti and everyone. My name is Wan Syamimi binti Wan Muhammad Tarmizi and my teammate Nur Maisara binti Azman Hisham, Nur Anissa binti Muhammad Jumain, Putri Lazara binti Mega Idil and Siti Nur Atira binti Abdul Latif. Okay, I will start the presentation first with the consumer credit topic. So, firstly, what is consumer credit? Consumer credit is personal debt taken on to purchase goods and service. Credit enable to expand immediate consumption by increasing purchasing power. This is a way to control the money because credit need to be paid. It also help to manage debt to choose the lowest interest payment. Okay, let's move to the next point which is step to prioritize the financial goal. Create an emergency fund as a reserve fund. Okay, we need to save money for the unexpected future use such as uh, if we had an accident or we need money to further our study and more. Second, uh, we need to pay off all the debt except the mortgage. And then the last one is the most important. We need to build an emergency fund up to six months. Okay. Type of consumer credit. They have two types of consumer credit. Firstly is open credit account. And then the second is loan. Okay. What is open credit account? Okay. Uh, open account credit is credit facility offered by a retailer or financial institution which allow to the customer to borrow up a predetermined amount to pay for a purchase. Okay, they have a type of credit which is the first one is credit card, charge card, retail charge card, revolving credit lines and the last one is overdraft. What is loan? Loan are often in large amount and have longer repayment period. The contract is formal and negotiate. One of which is lump sum and taken to finance expensive purchase. They have three main type of loan. For the first one is personal loan, car loan and then the last one is education loan. Advantages and disadvantages of credit card. So first, what is advantage of credit card? Credit card is easy to use, loss protection, provide means for credit, source of cash, convenience since we don't need to bring uh, our cash. And then the last one is incentive, uh, which is we got loyalty, shim, point reward and miles. Disadvantages of using credit card. So firstly, easy to get debt. Risk of fraud, overspending if we cannot control and manage our purchase. And then penalty due to the late payment. And then the last one is interest charge on outstanding balance is very, very high. Okay, next is fraud prevention. What we need to do. Firstly, we need to notify the bank for any changes. And then... Report immediately if uh, your card is missing to the bank and then always, uh, always, always and always check credit card statement. And then uh, the most impo important thing is safeguard your PIN number. And then the last one is uh, only give your uh, details credit card to the website and company that you only trust. Okay, next is financial charge on a credit card. They have three. For the first one is annual fee, interest charge, and then the last one is charge on cash advance. Personal loan offered by bank for the first one is monthly installment, fast approval, flexible repayment uh, up to 7 years, and then the last one is loan amount uh, depend on the monthly income. Okay, that's all from me. I will pass to the next presenter. Assalamualaikum and hi, my name is Siti Nur Atirah binti Abdul Latif and for now I am going to present about investment planning. What is investment? Investment is an act of investing current money with the expectation of obtaining profit or receiving an additional source of income in the future. What about investment planning? Investment planning is the process of identifying financial goals and converting them through building a plan. We need to identify our financial goals first before we choose the right type of investment for us. 
four rules of an individual in the investment process are first, evaluate potential investment. This is to ensure that our investment will perform well. Second, keep accurate and current records. Third, monitor the value of investment. And fourth, seek the assistance of a financial planner to guide us in achieving our investment goals. Now we move on to the types of investment, which are investment in savings account, investment in fixed deposit accounts or time deposit, investment in shares, investment in bonds, investment in residential home and residential properties, which are also known as property investment and investment in unit trust. Okay, now we move on to the components of the risk factor in which return on investment can be affected. First, inflation risk. During high inflation, the amount invested may not rise at the same rate. Second, interest rate risk. If interest rate high, the bond price will fall. Third, business failure risk. Bad management or products will affect stocks, corporate bonds, and mutual funds that invest in stock. Fourth, market risk. Investors' behavior affects the price fluctuation. And fifth, Global investment risk, the return on investment will be affected during the changes of currency. Now, I will present about retirement planning. Retirement planning is the process of determining retirement income goals and what are the actions and decisions necessary to achieve those goals. Retirement planning is important in order to maintain lifestyle even after retired. Three basics of retirement planning are first, analyze current asset and liability, then estimate spending needs and adjust for inflation. Second, evaluate the planned retirement income. And third, increase income by working part-time if necessary. Now, I will explain about four common issues and problems in retirement planning. Number one, spend first, save later. If we do not start saving now, Maybe our retirement income goals will be harder to achieve. Time is everything. Number two, use retirement savings for other purposes. People should be disciplined in saving for retirement by not using the money for other purposes. Number three, frequently changing jobs. Time taken to choose for another job is wasted with no retirement savings is collected. Number four, no proper emergency funds. People with no proper emergency funds tend to use their savings money during emergency. This could also affect their savings for retirement. EPF and SOSO are the two examples of institutions that will help private sector employees save for their retirement. SOSO, or also known as Social Security Organization, provides social security protections by social insurance to reduce the sufferings. So, so will provide coverage if the employee suffer from the employment injury. A member of so, so should be under contract of service or apprenticeship who earn wages RM3000 and below. Next, EPF or also known as Employees Provident Fund helps Malaysian workforce to save for their retirement. EPF ensures that the member's savings are secured and will receive reasonable dividends. 12% of employers' monthly salary and 11% of employees' monthly salary will be deducted to contribute to EPF. However, during this COVID-19 pandemic, the employees should only contribute 9% of their monthly salary. Employers who earn wages 5000 and below should contribute 13% of their monthly salary and employers who earn wages more than 5000 will contribute 12% of their monthly salary. EPF will also pay a minimum of 2.5% dividends into the member's account. Pension planning is a type of retirement planning for government employees. Pension planning helps in providing financial security for retired government employees who choose to get the pension scheme. The functions of pension planning are number one, formulating and monitoring the implementation of policies regarding retirement and retirement benefits. Number two, managing the disbursement of retirement benefits and cessation of service benefits. Types of pension benefits for retired pensionable officers or asked to retire from government service are entitled for these three pension benefits which are service pension, service gratuity 
and cash award in lieu of leave when applicable. Thank you Adira. Next, I will present about estate planning. Firstly, what is estate? Estate is a money or property left by the deceased which includes movable and immovable assets. Example of movable asset is cash, saving in bank, share, EPF share and also insurance claims. Example for immovable asset is house, building and land. What is estate planning? Estate planning is the process of anticipating and arranging during a person's life for the management and disposal of that person's estate during the person's life. In the event, the person becomes incapacitated and after that. There is two types of estate, which is tested estate, estate with will, and intestate estate, which is estate without wills. The importance of estate planning. First, an estate plan protects beneficiaries. Second, it will provide financial support for children, grandchildren, and spouse. Third, preserve will for later generation. Fourth, ensuring which are carried out. And lastly, ensuring the beneficiary's name is the person that you want to benefit. So what is will or wasia? Will is a document where a person states his intention as to how his estate is to be administered and distributed after his death and who is to administer it. Characteristic of wills It must give benefit to the will. Information on the appointment of an executor who will execute the will. Information of asset to the name beneficiaries. Appointment of guardian for minor beneficiaries and revocation of earlier will. Next, requirement to valid will. It must be in writing. It must contain a signature. Be of sound mind. It means that not be mentally ill. Not minor. And the last one, at least two or more witnesses. Who can make a will? It can be non-Muslim and also Muslim. For non-Muslim, anyone who owns property, personal property and real property. Personal property such as cash, stock, and for real property such as land and house. Next, for Muslim, one over three of the whole estate may be given away to non beneficiaries. Two over three must be distributed in accordance with the Islamic Farid law. Okay, next, why will is important? Because it can ease the administration of estate upon death. And it can ensure a state distributed for the benefit and charity of loved one, guarantee that the welfare and interest of children. The last one, it can make things easier for her. A step to take upon making a decision to write a will. Firstly, establish one well distribution objective. Second, analyze and evaluate one state of assets. Three, nominate Ben for. Appoint a trustworthy executor. Um, next, get assistance from a trustworthy. And the last one, ensure that the will is kept in a safe place. Next, Fara'id. Fara'id is a section of the Islamic law that deals with the distribution of the estate of a deceased person among his heirs in accordance with Allah decree in Holy, in holy Al-Quran and Hadith. There is five types of estate in Fara'id. Uh, which is land, house, jewelry, domestic animal, insurance, and cash. For the Hibah, Islamic banks voluntarily pay their customers a gift on saving account balances, representing a portion of the profit made by using those savings account balances in other activities. There is four characteristics of Hibah. First, contract of granting property of ownership to a specific party. A physical property and not debt. Third, no intention to receive reward. And lastly, sunnah in Islam. What is mean by wakaf? Wakaf means that holding certain property and preserving it for the confined benefit of certain philanthropy and pro prohibiting any use or disposition of it outside that specific objective. There is three characteristics of wakaf. First, irrevocable. It means that the donor cannot revoke the endowment. Second, perpetuity. 
it means that the donation must be perpetual once it is created. A third, inalienable. It means that the property itself is considered to be returned to God. There is two types of wakaf. First, charitable wakaf. Second, family wakaf. For charitable wakaf, it means that the wealth specified by giver to be used for specific purpose and function. For family wakaf, it's, it, it is for immediate family members like children and grandchildren. Thank you, my Sarah. So, we may face future financial challenges and there are some ways for us to overcome it. The first challenge is if we don't have any emergency fund. So, life events like loss of income, car breakdowns, hospital visits, or any unplanned incidents that might put us in a difficult situation if we don't have an emergency fund. Even a 5,000 ringgit emergency fund can keep us from paying credit card interest and taking out personal loan. One of the ways it, to overcome it is to set aside a portion of our monthly budget for emergency fund. Next is retirement. When a person is asset rich and cash poor, the person can no longer afford to live comfortably as well as pay for their upkeep of their house on reduced income. So what they can do is sell the house, downsize to something manageable and invest extra proceeds from the sale. Besides that, one of the challenges is we cannot get out from car payments. Car expenses take up a lot of additional money each month. Even though a person just upgraded their vehicle, they may feel as if they are constantly making auto payments and yet never paying them off. By changing the way you approach your car purchase, you could reduce your losses and minimize the cost of car payments. Another way is you can buy used cars. Another obstacle is when you carry a credit card balance every month. On any balance carried from one to the next, credit cards impose a higher interest. As you reevaluate your budget and work to reduce expenses, make sure your income is able to pay off credit card balances every month saving yourself from fees that push you further into debt. Thank you. That's all from me. I will pass to the next presenter, Hanisa. Thank you, Laila. The next future financial challenge is education loan. A big amount of education loan will limit the ability for someone to buy a house and it will reduce the savings. Delaying the payment all will add more interest of loan. This challenge can be overcome by paying more than a minimum monthly payment if we afford to. This action helps us to repay the debt in a short time. Other than that, we need to be responsible to pay loan. By paying an education loan, we will not only be free from debt, but we also will be able to achieve other financial goals. Next challenge is new family members. Having a new baby may increase the spend of household expenses as baby needs are expensive. However, it can be overcome by starting saving for baby expenses such as diapers, formula meal, and other baby equipment before the baby point. Next, we should spend wisely in order to have enough money for upcoming baby. Besides, this challenge also can be overcome by reused baby equipment. The parents can reuse previous baby equipment such as stroller, baby car seat, and clothing for the upcoming baby. Moreover, the future financial challenge that we may face is unemployment. As employee, we will have a risk of being retrenched, especially during this pandemic. Unemployed individuals will lose income and will suffer financial hardship. To overcome this challenge, we should reduce expenses, focus on essential needs such as food and others. Besides, we should accept part-time job in order to fulfill basic needs. Lastly, we should re-evaluate lifestyle in order to meet our budget. The last challenge is health and medical expenses. Health and medical expenses is a financial burden for who doesn't have any insurance as health and medical expenses is getting expensive. However, we can overcome this challenge by making a plan for emergency. 
create an emergency fund to support our financial when we get sick or warded in hospital. Lastly, this challenge can be overcome by purchasing a health and medical insurance. By purchasing the insurance, we are actually preparing a saving to pay health and medical expenses. That's all from us. Thank you.